Praise be to Jesus. Hi again, everyone. Well, let's continue here. December 7, 2015. Public art projection featuring images of humanity and climate change to illuminate St. Peter's Basilica on the opening of the extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy. Okay. Quote, on December 8th, a coalition convened by the World Bank Group's Connect for Climate Initiative will present a gift of contemporary public art entitled Fiat Lux, Illuminating Our Common Home, unquote, to Pope Francis on the opening day of the extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy to galvanize action and drive global attention to the importance of tackling climate change. At this unpreset, unpreset, unprecedented, uh, all right, I'll skip that, and historic event, beautiful images of our shared natural world will be projected onto the facade of St. Peter's Basilica in a contemporary work of public art that tells the visual story of the interdependency of humans and life on earth with the planet in order to educate and inspire change around the climate crisis across generations, cultures, languages, religions, and class. The large-scale architectural public art installation is inspired by the themes of climate change, human dignity, <laughs> and the Earth's living creatures in the encyclical uh, Laudato Si of Pope Francis, programmed to coincide not only with the Jubilee, but also with COP21 in Paris. The historic occasion will call on citizens of the world to join a global movement to protect our common home. You know, I just posted a message on another channel about uh, something from uh, uh, one of uh, Mother's messages um, that said, you know, it was from Maria Divine Mercy. And it said, you know, and it, and it talked about, um, you know, how this will become the focus of the next Pope. Um, and that was before, that was when Benedict was, uh, you know, in office. So, you know, she's talking about Francis. <clears throat> December 8th, 2015. Pope Francis opens door on his Holy Year of Mercy. Pope Francis pushed open the great bronze doors of St. Peter Basilica to launch his Holy Year of Mercy, declaring that mercy trumps moralizing in his Catholic Church. In his Catholic Church. It's his Catholic Church. Absolutely amazing. Francis launched the 12 month Jubilee to emphasize what has become the, I don't even know what, leet motif of his papacy, showing the merciful and welcoming side of a Catholic Church more often known for moralizing and casting judgment. Yeah, NBC News. <clears throat> December 11th, Bishop Marcelo Sanchez Sarando, uh, Chancellor of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, insisted the Pope's support for climate change science is not mere opinion, but part of the ordinary magisterium. <laughs> Whoa. And so is owed the same obedience by the faithful as the recognition that abortion is a mortal sin which is also part of the ordinary magisterium, he pointed out, <clears throat> National Catholic Register. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I just can't, I'm just, you know, a lot of this I've never even heard before. This is, I, I'm really enjoying this. And we got like uh, three and a half years, well, uh, three and a half years ago yet. All right, December 12th. Catholics should not try to convert Jews, Vatican says. Quote, Catholics should not try to convert Jews and should work with them to fight anti-Semitism, the Vatican said in a major new document. In concrete terms, this means that the Catholic Church 
neither conducts nor supports any specific institutional mission work directed towards Jews, said the document, adding that there was a principled rejection of an institutional Jewish mission. A Vatican expert in Catholic-Jewish dialogue said it was the first time a repudiation of active conversion of Jews has been so clearly stated in a Vatican document. NBC News. Oh boy. Uh, Jens Kruse of Rome's Evangelical Lutheran Church has said he believes Pope Francis, quote, opened the door, unquote, to intercommunion when the Holy Father spoke to his church last month and that his parishioners generally have the same opinion and that he thinks his flock feels freer in accordance with their conscience to receive the Eucharist in the Catholic Church after Francis comments on November 15th. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, boy. Yeah, the people, you know, it's all about, you know, your individual conscience instead of, you know, just following 2,000 years of, um, you know, everything that the saints have said, popes have said, theologians have said, what the Bible says, you know. Now it's throw all that out and you just follow your own conscience. Where people are going to, people who do that think that, oh, I don't have any trouble with the devil, you know. I mean, you know. Yeah, right. It's, it's those people who have the most trouble with the devil as the ones that think that they don't. You know, I mean, you can't fight an enemy unless you recognize that he exists. All right, let's continue. Here, I can talk for a long time. All right, here. Oh, I don't know. I got to check the time here. Boy, it's over seven minutes already. All right, December 14th. Pope calls on world leaders to adopt Paris climate deal. There has been reports Francis personally intervened to push the December December climate change deal through. It's from the Washington Post. <laughs> December 21st. Pope Francis gives another lump of coal to Vatican prelates, calling them out for, quote, scandals, unquote. For the second year running, Pope Francis used his Christmas speech to Vatican prelates to criticize them for the scandals and corruption, quote, diseases, unquote, he called them. They have bedeviled the Vatican in recent years, quote, some of these diseases became evident in the course of the past year, causing no small pain to the entire body and harming many souls, even by scandal, unquote, he said. In a Christmas address to the Vatican's lay employees, Francis struck a far friendlier note, thanking them for their service during the year and saying, quote, I also want to ask your forgiveness for the scandals in the Vatican, unquote, he said, asking the staff to pray for wrongdoers, Los Angeles Times. December 21st, the Vatican announced that Greg Burke, Opus Dei member, a former Time magazine and Fox News correspondent in Rome, who has served as senior communications advisor to the Secretariat of State since 2012, has been named the new vice director of the Holy See Press Office. That's from Crux. December 23rd, Pope Francis is awarded the International Charlemagne Prize. The prize is the oldest and best-known prize awarded for work done in the service of European unification. A communique by the prize committee said that Pope Francis has sent, quote, a message of hope and encouragement, unquote, at a time in which, quote, many citizens in Europe are seeking orientation, <laughs> unquote. The Pope, it continues, is a witness for a community based on values which include a sense of humanity, the protection of resources and dialogue between cultures and religions, 
at a European level. That's news.va. Um, December 27th, Pope Francis said, quote, How comforting it is for us to reflect on Mary and Joseph teaching Jesus how to pray. We know what Jesus did on that occasion. Instead of returning home with his family, he stayed in Jerusalem in the temple, causing great distress to Mary and Joseph, who were unable to find him. For this little, quote, escapade, he calls it an escapade, doing the will of his father is an escapade. Excellent there, Francis, unquote. Jesus probably had to beg forgiveness of his parents. Oh, he's just absolutely insane. Unbelievable. I, I, I'm just, uh, I remember this too. You know, I just thought it. Uh. The gospel doesn't say this. Well, well, at least he admits that. But I believe that we can presume it. Oh, yeah, presume it. There you go. Mary's question, moreover, contains a certain reproach, revealing the concern and anguish which she and Joseph felt. That's from news.va. Let's see, how much more? We only have two more to go here in this year. All right, so we'll do those. There aren't too long. <clears throat> December 27th. How Pope Francis became the, quote, people's pope, unquote, in 2015. Pope Francis is known for being a different kind of pope. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. He has called for equal pay for women, advocated for forgiveness for women who have received abortions. Well, there's nothing new about that. And couples that have been divorced or remarried. And even, well, it's not a sin to be divorced except for the sin involved with, you know, the breakup. I mean, you know, your personal sin having to do with the breakup. And even push world leaders to address climate change. Over the last year, he has also made efforts to interact with different people and speak up for their needs. He has met with members of the LGBT community, people with disabilities, prisoners, and others. He had lunch with gay transgender inmates. He met with a gay rights activist. He made a plea for man and nature. He took selfies with students, met with a gay couple while in the U.S. He spoke at a Ground Zero interface prayer service. Homeless man on the Pope. Quote, you know you are not alone, unquote. He stopped to bless children meets with church sex abuse victims, MSNBC. All right, and the last one for this year. Donald Trump, Pope Francis, Donald Trump, Pope Francis tie for second place as most admired man in 2015. Wow, Donald Trump is there. Well, you know, I pray for our president every day. Can you imagine if the Democrats were in power? But it's that this country would be Boy, God would, uh, you know, forget about withholding his hand to justice, man. He, 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 like, pound us big time, I think. Well, I mean, he's eventually going to do that anyway, but at least we can get some of this country straightened out. Or, you know, and, like, good things have been happening here lately. You know, there's, you know, the pushback on abortion is getting pretty, uh, you know, is, is really gained some steam and, and individual... Uh, states, they've, um, you know, turned the tide, um, you know, so, and that's a, you know, even if the, even in the end, um, if, um, you know, uh, we don't get, um, you know, like a lot of Supreme Court rulings, you know, really outlawing abortion in this country, at least in the meantime, you know, you're saving babies' lives and, you know, you're sa really saving the emotional life of, uh, the man and woman, or the boy and girl, whatever the case may be, um, you know, that created the child. So, you know, um, so that's a good thing. I pray, I pray a prayer. In fact, I pray it, um, I pray 30 prayers. I pray 
30 repetitions of the same prayer every day for abortion. I pray for our enemies. You know, I was just talking with someone about that on, in the comments. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't pray for Pope Francis. I, I, I don't feel I can do that. But I pray a prayer from the, uh, what is it, the Rokata, uh, which is the big book of prayers from like the 15th century. And, um, you know, it's a rather long prayer. And I have, I've said it for so long, I have it memorized, you know. Um, but it's a prayer for uh, Freemasons, you know, um, that, you know, God will, uh, you know, to, to help convert um, you know, Freemasons, um, you know, into, into the truth of Catholicism. Um, okay. All right, so we're done there. So next time we'll start 2016. Uh, okay, well, well, okay. <laughs> well, we're up over 15 minutes, but that's all right. Uh, okay, so we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.